Hey, what's up, everybody? So I kind of wanted to talk quickly about um, some espresso-based drinks that you can make at home, a little bit of background on some of these drinks, and um, let's get into today's topic. So I have in front of me a book called The World Atlas of Coffee by James Hoffman. And let's first get out of the way the cappuccino. Now, in his book, he says, there remains a great many myths around the cappuccino. One to get out of the way quickly is that the name has nothing to do with the hoods of monks, robes, nor the bald spots on their head. The original name for the drink was Capuziner, and it was a Vietnamese drink in the 19th century. It was a small brewed coffee mixed with milk or cream until it attained the same shades of brown as a capuchin monks robes essentially the name implies the strength of the drink now that's interesting to me because i always thought that the cappuccino had more milk than a latte but it actually doesn't it has less milk than a latte but more foam which kind of surprises me another recent myth surrounding the cappuccino is the rule of thirds the rule of thirds is passed around to this day and describes a traditional cappuccino as being one third espresso, one third milk, and one third foam. I was taught this early on in my coffee career, but this recipe has no root in tradition. I have read quite a few books about coffee, and the first reference to the cappuccino rule of thirds I can find was written in the 1950s. It describes the cappuccino as an espresso mix with equal amounts of milk and foam. This sentence appears almost verbatim a number of times in the book. The phrase is a little ambiguous, as it could be saying that only the milk and foam are in equal quantities, or that all three ingredients are. So instead of the recipe being the one-to-one-one, -one -one, the author could easily have meant it was the one-to-two-to-two the 150 to 170 milliliters cappuccino made with a single shot of espresso in the ratio of one to two to two does have a long tradition and is still widely served in much of Italy and the parts of Europe that haven't yet succumbed to more generous portions of coffee as fast food retail. This drink is also when well made, absolutely delicious. I think a great cappuccino is the pinnacle of milk based espresso drinks. A rich um, layer of dense, creamy uh, foam combined with sweet, warmy milk, and the flavors of a well brewed espresso are an absolute delight. The closer to lukewarm you can enjoy a cappuccino, the sweeter it will be. And I confess that the best ones. I've drunk disappear in a few greedy mouthfuls. Impossible if the drink is too warm. So, I mean, that's a great explanation of what a cappuccino is, the history on a cappuccino. That's why I love this book. Um, and next we'll talk about um, espresso. Now, how he defines espresso is I would define an espresso as a small, strong drink made using finely ground coffee under high water pressure. I would also add that an espresso should have crema. More precisely, I would say the ratio of weight of ground coffee to the weight of finished beverage is about one to two. I would rather have an open definition and treat espresso as a broad church than be overly prescriptive about what is right and wrong. Now, let me explain what a one to two ratio is. So if you have a home espresso machine, you're gonna use 18 grams of espresso and try to get 36 grams of liquid espresso into your cup around 25 to 30 seconds. Now, how you do this is with a scale. You're gonna have a scale. You're gonna put that under your uh, group head. You're gonna take a cup and you're gonna put it on top of your scale and you're gonna pull the shot of espresso right into the cup while it's sitting on the scale. And you're gonna to try to get 
36 grams of espresso. It's not too hard. It took me years of practice to try to master it and get it consistently, but it is way more consistent than just relying on the volume metrics of espresso machines. And not everybody is gonna have that built into their espresso machine too. It, it's very expensive feature. So always invest in a good scale. Scales are very important with getting um, consistent espresso. The next drink that we'll talk about, and this will be the last drink that we'll talk about, is the cafe latte. Now, what is a cafe latte? James Hoffman describes it perfectly in this book. He says, this drink did not originate in Italy. When espresso first spread around the world, it was a bitter, intense, and uh, extraordinary coffee experience for most. For some people, the bitterness was a problem, so they added hot milk to make the drink sweeter and less bitter. The cafe latte was created to satisfy the customers who wanted the coffee experience with less intensity. Typically, there is more liquid milk in a cafe latte than a cappuccino, making the coffee flavor less intense. It is also traditional to have less foam in the milk. I am always careful to describe the drink as a cafe latte rather than just a latte because many people travel to Italy and if they order a latte there, they will suffer the humiliation of simply receiving a glass of milk. See, that's interesting to me because very early on in my coffee journey, I always thought that a latte had less milk than a cappuccino. So that's very interesting. Um, but I think that that pretty much covers all the espresso drinks that I kind of wanted to cover today. There's more, but I'll cover the, these other drinks in the next segment um, of this podcast show. Um, because it's kind of getting a little late here, but I kind of wanted to um, bring some of that information to you. I think it's very interesting. Coffee is very interesting. It can be frustrating, though, as a home barista, because sometimes, you know, home espresso machines are not always consistent. And you're always kind of trying to change your grind size to try to um, get the perfect shot. And it can be fun, though. Don't get me wrong. But sometimes I'll have days where I'll waste a lot of coffee, but sometimes I'll get like such a great drink that it's totally worth it to go through some of the pains to experience a great drink at home. Because, you know, some of these drinks at a cafe are very expensive. So it saved me a lot of money. You know, it saved me a lot of money investing in a very good grinder because, you know, the grinder makes things way more consistent. So I would say, you know, invest in a good grinder first. And then if you have a little bit of money on the side, invest in an espresso machine. You don't need a $3,000 one. You don't need a $10,000 one. You know, at least put, you know, 700 to 1000 bucks away for it. Um, you can even get one that's a little bit cheaper than that. They tend not to last, so the, the cheaper ones. Um, but that's what I would do. Invest in a good grinder, use high quality water, and that's the best advice that I can give you. But I hope that you enjoyed this segment, and um, I'm probably going to go to bed soon, but I, I really do hope that you guys have a great Christmas, a great Hanukkah, uh, happy holidays to everybody, and uh, we'll talk soon.